<laughs> I'm sorry, I love Monster Yatsui so petty. <laughs> Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka Geek XX Chic, and we are back with another reaction to Sweet Home. We're now on to episode four of the final season. So the last episode, we have uh, the troop with Hyunsu and Unyu and the soldier and the crazy girl. They're all on their way to the stadium because basically they're like, that is where Yi Kyung's going, and she knows that Hyunsu really cares about Yi Kyung, and they just kind of want to keep that family together. So that's where they're headed. Although she's like, I know we can't go in the stadium because remember they've been away since before the overtake of the monsters. They don't know how things are right now. So anyway, she just thinks they're gonna go pick up Lee Kyung and leave. And right now we know that the persona of, uh, shall we say, Monster Hyun Soo is still in control. And he made a challenge to Lee Kyung, or sorry, to Hyun or Unyu, there we go, saying that if you can make the non-monster version of me wake up between now and when we get to the stadium, then I'll back off and I'll let him take the reins. So we'll see whether or not that happens. Uh, Crazy Girl is detoxing because she lost her bestie there in the last episode and she wants to do better for herself. And then back at the stadium, we see that Sangwon is trying to bond with his daughter, but when really we know that his real goal is to take over her body, but he needs her trust before he can do that. Not to mention the fact that he still can't jump out of the bodies. Yes, to the original owner of that body, they're still somehow messing up his ability to body jump. So. He's keeping these mad scientists around for now to figure out a way to get his ability to jump bodies back. And Lee Kyung, of course, heard all of this. She knows now well, you know, what her husband is, what he's up to. And now it looks like she's just following her husband and the daughter to figure out, or the boyfriend, I should say, to figure out what she can do to try to protect her daughter if there's any way for her to do so. Mad scientist told her that the only way that she could potentially stop her man. So that's where we left the episode, ready to jump into this one. So let's do that just before I do though the reminder that if you'd like to be in the know of when I drop episodes go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell all right that out of the way let's get into the episode right now you you okay bro maybe we, we, need, we need to stop being so excited oh right the noise is waking up every monster in the next six mile radius I know Exactly, exactly. This is why I cannot stand this cow. This man be spending 90% of his time protecting her when her ass should have been someplace that's not supposed. Now she stayed at the camp, but now she gonna put herself in some place where she still gotta rescue her ass again. Oh, he's acid. Oh, you want to go play with him? Go try to put acid on that one, I promise. It'll work out well for you, I promise. Huh? Oh, protein. He's still alive? I didn't realize it was the protein loser. I thought we killed him. Damn. Cut his head off now, please. Exactly. Exactly. Nasty. Ew. Oh, was he still frozen? Probably. Here go. Take it. It's disgusting. Ah! I knew ah! it! <laughs> I was like, you fell for that? <laughs> right? This is smart. Get the information. See, if it was regular Hyunsu, we'd not get this info. We need, we need monster Hyunsu. I like that he forgot about her. He's like, anyway, <laughs> rescue yourself, ho. That's fun. Oh, It's like, come along, toy. You think you're such a badass, but now you're gonna find out what a real badass looks like. Oh, she's happy. I feel bad. Like I don't. I want her to be happy, but just not with this psychopath. Oh, I feel for her. Both her parents kind of suck in different ways. What's this culty uh, outfit we got going on here? All right, well. Full of them who? She called them scraps though. But I mean, they could be monsters at this point, right? Clearly there's a lot of neo-humans. 
뭐가 좋겠어? My mom. 그것도 줘. 이것도 건데. Oh, well, you didn't care about taking somebody else's stuff. Yeah, exactly. You probably stole those damn gloves too. Not mad about that. Bullies deserve to be bullied. <laughs> Same. She's like, how? I monsterized you. <laughs> How'd this happen? <laughs> Human? Fair. I mean, you really weren't a great mom. Yeah. Right? You treated her like you hated her. Repeatedly. That was all true. Please articulate your feelings now, I beg of you. If you were a monster. Exactly. She also didn't really want you to die. There we go. Finally. Scared her. Say you were scared. There we go. Okay, at least she asked. I didn't just grab her. But mm, you have to remember, her. all of her memories with you are not good. You can't just be asking to run away right now. Yeah, she needs time. Good on you, Ikyung, yes. Let her know that she can trust you. Good girl, put it in her hands. She's learning. And I also think it's very kind that she didn't tell her about what her dad's plans are yet because she probably would have looked at it as a ploy, even though it's true. I also like that she just left out how she became a human again. <laughs> you did good, Lee Kyung. You did good. Is it good now? Ha ha! Your own rules. But yeah, it was gonna come out eventually. Oh yeah, the doctor's still in there. <laughs> Good. No, oh, he should have stayed in there for at least another two days. <laughs> it's true. It's too many of them. Although at least Mr. Acid Face is probably not going to be in the equation. I don't have to touch it, do I? This is why I wasn't a scientist, you know? Who it is? Is that him? Was he reborn already? <gasps> it's Unyuk! I had a feeling it was him, but I couldn't tell with the makeup. They did a good job. Isn't this like his second rebirth then? He was just super injured, to be fair. Oh, he was just super injured, to be fair. Did you? In this world? Still an arrogant ass. <laughs> that hasn't changed. <laughs> Someone tells me he's still not going to care that much about Unsu. <laughs> if he wanted to hurt you, he could have. Can't kill him with that gun anyway. He's so mad. He's like, y'all monsters got to be so damn handsome. Jeez. <laughs> oh. Interesting. Oh, okay. Oh, I don't know. How many times have they been reborn? So that's what happened to the lady who was in the womb last season. So she could still be alive. Hmm, that's what you don't really don't understand the human spirit at all, do you? Yeah, just simple math should let you know there's a, there's a significant amount. Yeah, they're the only ones who can take them out. So what, where does Hyun Su fall in this? You still looking for your sis? What if she doesn't want to be a neo human? All right, well, there might be hope for Unyu yet. I'm just still curious as how this is all going to get back together here. 
방금 그거 프로포즈인가? 나 책임진다는 거 같지? Wow. I thought the weirdness would wane with sobriety, but apparently not. <laughs> I'm sorry, I love Monster Yasui so petty. <laughs> Listen, he has a lot of aggression to let out. He had to be quiet all last season, or first season, I should say. <laughs> if he couldn't kill me before, he can't now. <laughs> Why don't we just relax? How about that? Bro doesn't know how to appeal to her. He's like, I try to talk since she gets mad. I try to speak her language, she walks away. <laughs> okay, for the billionth time, Hyunsu doesn't kill innocent humans. The soldier, if he wanted to kill him, he could have done it instantly. Choking him out was for fun. Literally, after all this time, this girl, please put the fire out. All right, just burn down the forest or whatever. But like, for real, like choking him out was just for fun. Hyunsu wouldn't have let him kill him. Damn. What did you expect though? For real, you could have killed him. Okay. So now you're his chauffeur? Damn, pretty privilege is real. Hmm. Look at him being intelligent. Aww. He's gonna give it to her. Not me tearing up. You're his new big sister. Oh, Jesus Christ. Now this man's gonna go snitch. But he took that thing out of her, right? So he won't be able to track her the way he did before? I'm glad that I was right, though, about how the daughter would want the connection with her mom because that's who she's been with thus, this far. Thus far, there we go. I think she could sense that her dad was full of it. Oh, wait, what? What's wrong? Oh God, did I speak too soon? Why are you human? Oh, right. Apologize. You should have named her. Can we know it? Because I've had to call her the girl. Can you tell her? We still don't get to know. Liar. Period. You saw me, you didn't do sh So that's lies, moving on. I'm trying not to be impatient about this. I gotta remember that she really did want him back. Remember he wants to inhabit the body of your child. <laughs> It was never him. He was a weak man looking for power. You took way too long to run, sis. Damn, you just got healed up. That's a mama bear! He gonna recover from that, but at least it gave her time. She really just likes making that woman suffer, huh? <laughs> the symbolism. Remember Nee Kyung's nightmare? She was holding the baby up the same way. <laughs> One last screw you. I love it. <laughs> Isu! Lee <laughs> Kyung and Isu! <laughs> Mom's I somehow knew it was going to be a dying gift. Yeah, you don't get your dad's name. Screw that loser. Damn, they both killed this woman like three times in this show. I was say, maybe you should turn her again? Oh! 
respectfully, you needed to run. So that sacrifice is kind of for nothing right now. But I know for plot, we couldn't have her leave just yet. Okay, guys, that was a heavy episode. Sad. Like I said, they have to keep, why do they keep doing this to Yi Kyung? Why do they keep doing my girl like this? <laughs> they need to stop. They brought her back, fully healed her, just to kill her again. Anyway, I guess we need some motivation for the daughter to make sure that she fights whatever her father's gonna try to do utterly and completely because she was getting a little bit enamored by him and his whole promises. But I'm glad I was right in that. I think that she deep down knew that it was all just lip service. Like, we have a name, Isu. Isu, she's young, but she's very intuitive. As I said, she always kind of understands the undercurrents of what people are feeling, even if she doesn't fully understand what they are. So yeah, with her dad, she knew that like this man, yeah, he's being nice to me. He's telling me all these things, but I think she could sense that there was no depth to it or real genuine connection to it compared to, again, if she'd never been around Hyun Su, if she'd never been around her mother, she probably would never have known the difference, but she does know what someone who truly cares for her is like. And so she kind of knew, I think, in her, in her gut that her dad was not on the level. But at that point she was like, you know, he's letting me do what I want. He's making me feel accepted. These are things that's all she ever wanted from her mom and from Hyun Su too. Cause Hyun Su, he wasn't as extreme as her mom, but he did kind of try to get her to like hold back with her tendencies as well. So anyways, Point being, she didn't really feel as accepted by either of them as she was feeling with her dad. So like I said, at the beginning of the episode, it was really nice to see her smiling and throwing her head out the window and getting breeze in her face. Like probably for the first time ever since she was like the toddler size, she felt like happy and free, which is, you know, the way she should feel most of the time. So anyhow, I thought that whole thing with her and her mom, like I'm glad that if nothing else, e, e, um, is it e Kyung? God, I forgot her name already. Yeah, I'm glad that Lee Kyung at least got the opportunity to apologize to her because that's something that was long overdue to let her know that everything was not her fault. It was her own fears and her own misconceptions that she was projecting onto her and that it was never about hating her. She never did hate her. If anything, she hated that she wasn't human, but it was never about her as a baby, right? It was always that internal battle. So obviously she couldn't and didn't have the time to get into the depths of that. Plus I think Lee Kyung was still trying to figure it out for herself, but I'm glad she was able to at least let the baby know it was never you it was me I don't hate you I just want you to be safe and I love like I said that in that conversation she didn't give up the fact that it was Hyun Soo that took the monsterization away which is so sad because if she'd been more in control of it she wouldn't have died but anyway uh and also the fact that she didn't tell her what her dad's real plan was right because as I said as much as it was a bit of a protection to tell her it was better that she didn't in that moment because her daughter might have taken that as oh you're just saying that so I'll go with you you know Lee Kyung handled that conversation perfectly in my opinion apologized, explained where she was coming from, explained why she wanted her to go and said, listen, I'm letting, it's up to you. You think about it. I'll wait here if you want to go. I'll, I'll, I'll be waiting for you. If you don't want to go, I'll, I'll accept that as well. So putting that into Isu's court to decide is really what I think was the deciding factor because that's when she realized it wasn't, there was no other ulterior motive in that moment. And also we have to remember that before that, the old Lee Kyung would have just grabbed her and tried to force her out of there, right? She was very like, she never used to really listen to what Isu wanted, but she really was like, no, I'm leaving it up to you. Because uh, I think that's what, what's great about that is that the fact that Lee Kyung followed her with their dad, with her dad for so long, she was able to hear more of where Isu's mind was at and, you know, realize why Isu would be tempted to stay with her dad, if that makes sense. So I think that's really helped her to make sure she took the right approach as far as trying to convince her to come with her. So well done there, but obviously a little too late because there are rats in the nest. And unfortunately, yeah, the, the conversation between the kids was overheard. And of course that guy told on them because he's a jerk. Let's be fit. I, <laughs> let's face it. He's a, he's a jerk really. So yeah, we see, unfortunately it was too little too late. And I thought it was really well played that moment. I think you know, with them, um, when Sang Won came up and you saw that he actually got emotional. I do think that super old, somewhere in there, the man that was still even remotely human, Sang Won genuinely was happy to see Lee Kyung again. And there is a little remnant of him that did love her. But as we all know, that man has been long dead and the greed has taken over. So yeah, you know, I just thought in that moment though, with Lee Kyung hugging him, she needed that moment because she really hasn't had a chance to truly grieve him, right? Because she saw his body at Bumsam and then she immediately 
went into labor and then she had the monster baby. And then there was like, again, just so many things that Lee Kyung's had to process in so little time. So she never really got a chance to properly grieve the death of her man. And knowing that he's still in some shape or form there, but that he's turned into this, it's not even about the, the creepy tentacle arms. It's literally just the fact that he's such a cold hearted bastard that's willing to take his body, take the body of his own child. Like he's turned into the ugliest form of monster that has nothing to do with what his body is, right? So she really needed time to grieve the man that she thought she knew. And I think that, you know, that hug, they did a good job of just kind of showing that this was her letting go of that one last time because it drove so much of her purpose in season one, right? So anyway, but then of course we see she did the best that she could as a lowly human to try to protect her daughter. I'm, I, I feel like in that moment, it would have been nice if she could have somehow let her daughter know that he's trying to take over your body, so run. But I get why her daughter couldn't run. Like that's her mom. She just got her back and now she's watching her get wrecked by this man. And now, I mean, I mean, obviously the, the rose colored glasses have been kicked off her face because her dad showed that he don't give a damn about her. And I mean, in the end, she did kind of spill that if you need a body, take mine. Lee Kyung did tell, but as he said, yeah, I don't care about you. I only let you live because you were pregnant. Like, I, otherwise I would have killed you in the lab. So yeah, that's a lot. Poor Lee Kyung just got beats. Like, I feel so bad for her character. She's my favorite female character in this show and she just got run through and I'm so sad about it. I'm sad we lost her, but at the same time, I feel like what else can we do? Super sad that I saw the daughter wasn't able to monsterize her. Like, I think it's the first time she couldn't control it. I don't know if that's because Lee Kyung was already dead or if it's because she was so emotionally overcome that she couldn't control it in that moment. But I was like, I'm like, at this point, I kind of want her to turn her into a monster again. She just so she can, you know, not die. And then, you know, then Hyun Soo can bring her back. I don't know. But anyway, if she wanted to even come back, but who knows? Actually, no, she's dead. I was going to say, maybe she's going to be like the scraps, but no, I think the scraps were already monsters and Lee Kyung wasn't symptomatic at all. So damn it, we lost her. Anyhow, super sad, super traumatic for the girl, for Isu. She's the name now. And so we'll have to see how she takes this. I do hope she's going to channel it. Her dad thinks she understands, he understands Isu, but he really doesn't, not fully yet. So Isu's never had a reason to be, like really tap into the, so we, shall we say, dark side of her power uh, because she's just been existing, but her dad just started her villain arc. So we'll see what happens with that. I think she's gonna be very traumatized in this upcoming episode, the next one, but she can literally whisper to monsters within God knows how far. And her dad is strong, but he ain't that strong. So she's gonna have to tap into that ability real quick and bring a whole mess. I mean, I'm sorry to the other people in that stadium, but I feel like it's the only way she's gonna be able to really, cause she can't fight, right? I don't think she can like fight, fight, but yeah, I think the only way she's gonna be able to possibly get herself a distance between her and her dad, she needs to bring all the monsters all the monsters until because remember that body's already half wrecked so if that body gets wrecked with her dad in it he's got nowhere to go so yeah anyways uh, hopefully she'll figure out that she needs to do something soon but of course we know that hyunsu is on the way and when he sees Lee Kyung, yeah it's gonna get messy real quick in that place so that was that other than that we did have a lot of uh monster hyunsu this episode as i said i love him personally i don't want him to go anywhere he's petty <laughs> He's a little bit mean and I'm about it because like I said, season one Hyun Soo was a bit of a pushover and I get why, like they definitely let us know why he was the way he was in season one. But as I've been saying for multiple episodes, you can't be that way all the time and not have certain feelings build up over time, like resentment, anger, um, just a lot of things, right? And we saw in season one too, that the monster side of Hyun Soo has always been a little bit loopy. So <laughs> I kind of like seeing him come out once in a while because otherwise Hyun Soo just kind of just rolls over and does whatever on you tells him to do. And I just, like I said, I don't like the way she talks down to him. She still does. And so I'm hoping that'll change since it has to be, since that's the love of his life or whatever. But yeah, anyways, I enjoyed seeing him this episode and him beating on that little runt. Uh, I do think he should have just ended it, but I get why he didn't. I think he was enjoying beating him up a little bit, but obviously he's gonna get to the stadium before Hans. Well, actually maybe not, because Hansu can fly. He could potentially beat him, but, oh no, he's got the vehicle, I forgot, yeah. My point is, I'm pretty sure he's gonna get back to the stadium before Hansu somehow and warn Sangwon that he's on the way and that he's stronger than he was before, but that's obviously gonna push Sangwon to get out of that body sooner than later. So anyways, we'll have to see what happens. The way things are going, I have a sneaking suspicion that Sangwon's gonna be somewhat successful. I feel like this is gonna become like a battle for Isu's soul <laughs> by the end of the season that somehow someone's gonna get in there. Isu's gonna try to fight it, but she won't know how. And somehow 
Hyun Su is going to be the one who somehow is able to use his ability to get in there and force that guy out once and for all. But yeah, I was really hoping we'd never get to that point, but I have a sneaking suspicion we will. Anyhow, that's Hyun Su. He basically is on his way there now, and uh, we see that Unyu is. <sighs> freaking out because she saw Monster Hyun Su in his nasty side and she's like, oh, I don't know if I can even break it. Girl, first of all, breathe. Second of all, it was a monster. You're acting like you took an innocent little human and was like torturing them. No, it was a monster who enjoyed torturing humans for fun. This was literally his comeuppance. Again, I know it's not a good idea to watch someone revel in torturing people no matter who they are, but in this case, like, is this really the worst case scenario? Come on, like, just step back, sis, breathe. It's been one day out of the three that he gave you for this deal. Like, you need to chill out. But Anyhow, she's saying she wants to go to the stadium now because she's like, if Hyun Su's going there and this other creepy um, monster human's going there, the point is she's like, the stadium's in trouble. We need to get there and see if we can warn them. But of course they are well behind everybody. So I don't know what she's thinking they're gonna be able to do, but that's her. You know, if it wouldn't be on you if she didn't throw herself into unnecessary danger and make people have to save her. So anyway, that was them, not much to say there. And then finally we did see that Unyuk is back. Unyuk was, I thought it was him though. I was like last episode, but after when I was editing, I was like, I think that's Zunyuk actually. But I couldn't really tell. They did a good job with like the distorting with the makeup on his face. But I'm like, this part, the part that isn't distorted looks a lot like Gunyuk. But last season, what threw me off is that last season we saw that he came out of a cocoon. So I was like, he's human. Like he's fine again. Like why would he be here? So now they've explained that. But he said that's him. That basically he was reborn, joined this cult <laughs> of other people like him. Which again, Miss Kim, I think her name was from season one. That was her. She's a reborn. So she might still be around. Actually, she would be because she probably turned into a chrysalis again. As once they die, they just come back. So anyway, she's probably still wandering around the poor apartment buildings all by herself naked. Anyhow, but that explains what happened all the way back in season two with Miss Kim coming back all naked and not remembering who she was. So that's what kept keeps happening. Although it looks like with Unyuk, he did keep his memory. Like he didn't come back looking spacey or anything. Um, He basically is like, I need this body to die because it's wrecked. And that's why he said, kill me. Like we didn't get last episode why he kept saying to Sergeant Kim, kill me kill me he's like mm. and then he took his own life it's because he knew it's the only way to get his body redone so i do wonder if he has any other abilities though like does that mean he just like is his monsterization just that he gets to keep coming back or does he have an ability like all the rest of them do whether it's some type of mutation so i'm curious about that part it does seem like these well scraps as the other people call them they do seem to be more on the passive side than not they don't seem to be wanting to fight anybody because they clearly knew when they went to the stadium though those three other ones that when they went to the stadium they clearly knew that they were they were dealing with neo humans and they didn't even try to attack them so i'm thinking that they're not as i said i think they're passive i don't think they want to hurt people human or otherwise but we see that obviously that's not Sangwon doesn't want that. He wants neo humans that are willing to kill and do whatever and not just chill, right? And I don't think Sangwon has that ability. I think the neo humans that we saw, the ones that have the mutations, the ones that are like the ones at the stadium, I don't think they have an infinite amount of rebirths. I think that might just be some of the neo humans. So that is why Sangwon is so obsessed with figuring out how to keep jumping bodies. So I don't know. I could be wrong about that, but that's what I'm picking up from that situation. So even within the neo humans, there seems to be a hierarchy, which is interesting. But yeah. So now we know what's been going on with Onyuk. He has been around for a minute um, trying to figure out this whole neo-human thing. It, he's still keeping the picture of his family with him. So I do think there's a part of him that is still at least thinking of Onyu, but he's probably like, sh first of all, not even sure if she's still alive. And second, he probably feels like they're just not of the same world anymore. But I don't know. We'll have to see what happens when he actually sees her because now he's on the way to the stadium as well because he knows he, apparently his form of neo-human can sense other neo-humans that are like him. And I guess, like I said, either the glasses guy or um, the stadium lady's son. One of the other has cocooned. We don't know which one yet. I think she said it was her son though. She seems to think it was her son because she assumes glasses died. So that could be true. But either way, they know that there's one in the stadium. So that's where he wants to go. So as I said, all roads leading to the stadium, but we know that. And we'll have to see how it all goes when people show up there. But as I said, I think I, I got hope for Isu. I really do because between the little boy that she really forged a cute little relationship with and the fact that she bonded with her mom right before she died. Like I think her love, well not love, but her disdain for humanity has waned. And I do think now she's gonna have a reason to try to protect the people at the stadium. So that's all we need. We need some level of resistance to whatever her dad is trying to do and we'll see what happens with it. So yeah, another good episode, packed, a little bit emotional. <laughs> R.I.P. again, my girl E. Kyung. But yeah, I definitely enjoyed the episode and I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please show some love and I'll see you in the next one.